coming up on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, a hot rod with benefits. I go to the garage sometimes and watch a few movies. A lot goes into building a custom. Filling in and smoothing. Yeah, but there's more than that. Improving on the design that they had made. There you go. And put a good sound system in a fabulous 51, and guess what? Sounds like Carnegie Hall in there. Plus. And now our process is, is to take care of all the pits, the imperfections, the dents, the dings, all the ugliness, and make it perfect. We visit the underside in the restoration of the last Hemi. So let's get started. Oh, yeah. Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, starts right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps, and we're in Wadsworth, Ohio. At the Galaxy Restaurant, they do a car show each and every year. They have a big parking lot, and it is full. Bill, I love El Caminos. I've always loved El Caminos. I love the whole concept behind them. And I can't tell you the last time I saw one from the early 60s out on the road. Yours is fabulous. Well, this was the last year that they made the El Camino. They only 59 and 60, then they stopped making them till 64. And then they made them till 80, 64 to 87. Now I love the little license plate you have that says, I'm not a car, I'm a truck. Right. right. It is a truck, but it's built like a car, kind of. Right, from the, from the doors forward, from the doors forward, it's the same as the convertible, or the same as the Impala, it's just the only, just the back is different, that's all. Why do you think that they don't make such a thing anymore? At least exactly like this. They come out a couple years ago with that little Chevy pickup, mm -hmm. but it just didn't, it just didn't do it. How long yeah. have you had this one, Bill? I've had this from 2005. And you found it where, looking like what? Ashland, it was an everyday driver till I bought it. And um, then you had what done to it? I had it, uh, all the nicks and all the dents and stuff taken out of it, and he uh, had it painted. It's beautiful. Thank you. The bed, I love. The yeah. bed is a terrific looking bed. I also love the fins on it, too. Yeah, well, the fin, that's the last year of the fins. You'd never expect a fin on a truck, would you? Uh, right, right. <laughs> right. What now, kind of work went into the bed? Well, that's not the original bed. The, the bed was metal but it was so dented up and stuff, I couldn't straighten it out and I couldn't find replacement panels for the bed. So I just put the uh, oak flooring in it. Nothing against the metal? The oak panel looks better. Well, I think, I think the oak looks fabulous well, in there. Yeah, it, it does a lot for the truck, I think. Nothing, nothing offensive here. Guys as old as us, we know what these are. Yeah. A lot of the young folks, I would guess, come up to you, Bill, and say, what did you do to this thing? Right. Yeah, they, they think it's a, a makeover of something else. Now, most of them don't know that that's a 348 engine. They've never seen a 348. And it's got the emblems, this, this insignia, 348, the cross flags on the back, 348. That's the only difference. There's no... There's no number or anything that says 348. It just says V8. So it could be a 283 or a 348. But these cross flags makes it a 348. How about the interior? It's spotless. Well, I, that's all, all new. Well, you've done a nice job preserving a piece of automotive history. Well, thank you, sir. Dan, anytime you drive this anywhere, you have to have people absolutely gawking at your car. They go crazy. <laughs> it's a 1950 Mercury. It looks like it's freshly restored. Am I wrong? No, it's, it's not freshly. It's been 11 years. 11 years, and it still yeah. looks this good? Yep. And you drive it? I drive it every, every day almost. Well, how have you kept the paint job looking this good for 11 years because it's beautiful? Well, I use a wax called Jack Wax. It's a wax that... Uh, I found out that it puts a good shine on it. It's hard to keep it clean when it rains and stuff, but you guys have seen the rainy days. So we did. <laughs> you know what it's all about. When did you get this car, and what did it look like when you got it, Dan? I got it 11 years ago. 
It was all, the body work was all done except, you know, it was rough then. It had, it was black with flames on it then. Uh, it was like a satin black on it. And you decided to do what with it and why? Well, I just, I, the black just didn't, you know, it didn't do nothing for me. And it just kept, I kept having scuff marks in it and stuff. So I had my son to design the uh, job that I wanted done on it. And uh, he did drew it up and the colors and everything. And then we had it painted this way. Well, it's a nice look. Your son did a nice job on it. Oh, uh, thank you. The headlights are snazzy. My, I'm, I'm getting a little dizzy watching the blue lights go around though. Yeah, the headlights, I just put them on there, the lighting, but the uh, flames, my son cut them out because he's an artist, and uh, I put them on there. And same thing with the uh, parking lights, they're supposed to look like eyeballs. The interior, was this, was that the way it was when you picked it up? Yeah, it was done already, the interior was. What was it about a 1950 Mercury that you thought, yep, I have to have it? Well. I grew up with my mom and dad. My mom and dad had one when I was young. I remember standing on the hump in the, between the seats in the back. <laughs> and I've always wanted one since then. And now you have it. I have one now. Every bit as fun as you thought it would be? Well, I knew it'd be a lot of fun. My wife, she really enjoys it a lot. Dan, a lot of people love taking their classics to the drive-in theater. Yes. You bring the drive-in theater with your classic. That's what, right. What, what do you have in the trunk? I got a drive-in theater. Uh, I watch movies on it. Kids come up and they have a blast when they're watching. I then play. you actually can watch movies. You're watch, oh, yeah. We have Dirty Dancing going here. Right, right. <laughs> and how did this come about? Well, I was going to put a screen in the back wall, and my son told me, he said, let me build you something, Dad. He said, it would be cool. Well, he built it. It took him a uh, few months to do it, and then he surprised me with it. It was pretty cool. I like it. Thank you. So if you're ever bored at home, you can just go out to the trunk and watch a movie. Exactly, and that's what I do. I go to the garage sometimes and watch a few movies. <laughs> well, it's a great looking car, Dan. It's really, really sharp, and I can't believe it's an 11-year-old restoration because it looks pretty, pretty brand new. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> You want a great color combination? We have a great color combination. It had to have a white interior in because it just makes it pop. Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. We'll be right back. Sally, Tina, Betsy, you've developed quite a bond with your classic car. Let the consignment professionals at RK Motors Charlotte make the selling process as painless as possible. Through precision marketing and large customer base, we all but guarantee a sale at maximum value, and we don't get paid until your car sells. We've sold over 1,500 classic cars here at RK Motors Charlotte, and now we'd like to get to know Betsy, at least for a little while. Visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Dick, as if Studebaker wasn't a cool enough design, as it was. A customized Studebaker is about as cool as you get. And yours looks really, really sharp. It's a 1950 Studebaker Starlight. Starlight Coupe, yeah. How long have you had this? I bought it about in 2000, I think, 2001. Um, I bought it and a, and a, a parts car with it. Um, it was a serious big project, but I had retired, so that's what I was going to do. And you had what in mind? This exactly? Yeah, yeah, basically chop top, and uh, you know, filling in and smoothing, and and uh, and using the the improving on the design that they had made, getting rid of the big ugly bumpers, and it was pretty rough looking. Um, it it was an Arizona car, so actually compared to a lot around here, it was not too bad but it still needed a lot of, of work uh, in the floors and, and that sort of thing. How did the project progress? What was the difficult aspect? Just about everything. I'd never done anything <laughs> like this before. And uh, I put a Fat Man fabrication frame stub on the front, which gives you the Mustang uh, steering and brakes, and, and I had never done that. Or, and uh, of course, chopping the top, I had never done that. And, uh, it just takes a lot of time and trial and error and thought. 
ask your buddies. <laughs> <laughs> What's under the hood? It's a 350 Chevy, just a stock crate motor. Which doesn't surprise me since the man with a Studebaker has a Chevy emblem on his hat. Well, I'm a Chevy guy, but I just happen to own this one Studebaker. You, you took a, why did a Chevy guy take on a Studebaker project? I just love the looks of this car. I, it just had so much potential that uh, I, just, I, and I wanted a street rod, but I wanted something different, something real different. The bullet nose is almost synonymous with Studebaker. I mean, you see the bullet nose and you think, well, there's the Studebaker. I love it. And it's kind of surprising to most folks that that was only around for, what, two years, right? 50-51, yeah. It's, it's funny because it is the symbol of Studebaker that people remember so much, and yet they used it so little. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people remember the Starlight Coupe because of the back window and the, and the you know, it looks like it's going either direction. Yeah. That kind of thing. How about that wrapped glass back there? All the windows in the car are Lexan. And... Uh, I cut them all and, and uh, made patterns and cut them all and uh, it just took, like most of it, a lot of time and uh, trial and error. Now this car did have wrapped glass in the back, but it wasn't nearly that small. It was a much bigger piece, am I correct? It had four separate windows, four separate pieces. And I eliminated the ones on the sides because I thought that the, that the one piece flowing all the way around to the back just looked, gave me the look I wanted. I thought it looked really neat. Well, no bumper, different glass, chop top. I don't know what you were thinking, but it certainly is a good look. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Frank, red cars usually jump. This red car really jumps. I love the red, but the white really sets it off because it is a, it's, it's as pure of a white as you'll ever see on a car. Right. I try to get it as close to the top as I could so that it would all look, you know, give it a little pizzazz. And I think I hit it on the money with this white. I think you did. It's a 1951 Ford Victoria. Right. The word crown is not in there. No. no. Why? Well, I don't think back in 51 they had wanted to call it the crown. I don't think the crown started until later in the 50s. Yeah. So the Victoria name, Victoria. Has, it's been around for a long time with yes, Ford. Yes, it has. And this is a great example of it. Where did you find this car? Up in Pennsylvania. Right. Looking like what? Well, it needed a lot of stuff done to it, the body and just everything, a lot of cosmetic stuff, and Terry was completely gutted. Uh, just, it needed a lot of detailing. Uh, I put power windows in it, uh, uh, power steering brakes, uh, stereo system. It's got a 1600 watt stereo system in it. Always wanted one, every when I was a kid, to have a good radio, and I don't even play it that much, but it sounds like Carnegie Hall in there. But uh, it's got a, um, 351 Ford Windsor motor, uh, an overdrive transmission, and a uh, nine inch Ford rear end, which is all new from front to back. So it's got a lot of the right stuff. And when I saw this car, I just, I wanted to buy it because when I was a kid, my dad gave me one. And uh, I kind of destroyed that one, you know how kids are. And I said, <laughs> if I ever found another one that was worth doing the way I wanted to do it, this would be the way I would do it. And it came out pretty nice, yeah. How long ago did you buy it? How long did the restoration take? Well, the restoration took one complete winter. I bought it uh, two years ago. Wow. It'll, be, it'll be going on three years now. It was finished last year. And um, that's pretty much it as far as uh, just a lot of hard work. I'm retired and I had, I had some good people working on the interior. The rest of it, I kind of did myself, put everything, to, you know, all that stuff together to make it all work. Yeah. Stock pretty much all the way around on the outside? Pretty much all stock except for the, the French headlights, the nose, uh, the nose, the uh, louvers and the hood on the front end. And on the back side, it's decked and that's pretty much it. It's been lowered, you know, uh, with drop spindles and stuff like that to make it, to give it that look. These, the skirts are custom made uh, uh, out of, they're regular original skirts that were cut and made to fit the wheel housings and the wheel housings were cut out so they would fit right inside of that. And then the rear end was narrowed so everything would fit right. Frank, mm. you've done a lot of cars. Yeah, a lot of cars. What thought process went into this? Because you just, you, you listed off a laundry sheet of great stuff you've done to this car. Right. You obviously had a vision and a oh, plan. Oh, I did. I had a vision when I, when I saw the color that I wanted to put on it and, the, and I knew just it had to have a white interior in it because it just makes it pop. It does. And uh, it, just, it just came out really well. 
and uh, I just like red anyway. Reds are, you know, this is a laser red uh, Ford 2000 Ford color. So it came out really well. Very so now what do you it. do with it other than pick up trophies? Well, it's one of Sheriff trophies. I enjoy driving it. Uh, I like talking to the people mostly at car shows. I'm really honored that you guys even uh, picked it up to look at it, you know, but stuff like that means a lot to me. Winning is always good with everybody. Everybody wants to be a winner, you know, and uh, some days you win, some days you don't, you know. So Frank, you had one as a kid. Yeah. You kind of trashed it. Yeah. What would your dad say if he saw you with this now? I don't know. Special. Coming up next. What I'm doing is just emphasizing where all my pit marks are. Going over, finding all the dings as I go along. The restoration of the last Hemi continues on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Handling classic and high performance vehicles requires an industry leading team of experts. Welcome to RK Motors Charlotte. Industry leading means meticulous attention to detail when servicing every vehicle. It means a consignment service so fine-tuned that a successful sale at maximum value is all but guaranteed. And a rigorous inspection on every vehicle before its tires even touch our sales floor. It's all this and more that make RK Motors Charlotte the industry leader. Visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. From start to finish, it's the restoration of the last Hemi. So here we are with the underside of the Hemi. We've gotten it on the rotisserie now since it's came back from the dipping and the e-coating. And now our process is, is to take care of all the pits, the imperfections, the dents, the dings, all the ugliness and make it perfect. Um, what I like to do with a Hemi and convertible cars, Hemi's mainly because of the weight and convertible cars because of lack of structure, is finish the bottom completely. Get it on its suspension so when it's settled, it's the way it's gonna naturally sit on the road. Uh, this way I can assure that my gaps are proper, everything fits good, and it's not gonna change when I drop the engine in it and you put that big thousand extra pounds in the front end and start moving on metal. I like it to be in there so I can play around with it and get the weight set. Um, here we are already. I started some sanding and what I'm doing is just emphasizing where all my pit marks are. Going over, finding all the dings as I go along. Now, some people may fight with you a little bit on dings, dents, and what have you. Uh, of course, I'm going for the extra top of the line, best of the best don't want any imperfections. But, you know, I find a ding here that to me appears to be a spot where it might have been something when they were stamping it, got between the metal and the stamping. Because I can't see the crease at all of where it would have been. I know it's not supposed to be there. I've seen others that it was nice and crisp and perfect there. Um, so I am gonna ding it and fix it. But is it right? Is it wrong? There's so many tales, there's so many ways that you can fight that and so many times people will sit and have a nice heated debate on that should have been fixed that shouldn't have been fixed that should have been left because it was a factory flaw it goes on and on round and round um they didn't stop the line they weren't going to scrap a car because of a ding in an uh, underpan you know standards have changed over the years and nowadays they may but back then a little dent they were going to let it go but we're gonna fix them all. We're gonna fix the years of abuse where, you know, it may have went and got an oil change and uh, the guy just jacked it up on any old spot that he could find to lift it. He changed the tire. Uh, maybe they bottomed it out or ran over something. Uh, they tied it down on a tow truck and they used to use hooks in the holes on the frame and then they pull them and they look all wrinkled and distorted. None of that will be the case on this car. Everything will be smooth, fixed, flat, perfect. No more pits, no more damage, no more anything. Um, we've still went back and forth with the owner on this one. He wants a car that's built better than factory standards, but a car that looks as perfect to factory as possible. The two collide a little, and we're trying to find that ground on which way we're gonna go. But right now, we're just gonna start getting it sanded, 
prepped, polyed, and every pit and every imperfection taken out of it. And we'll start from there and see how she finishes. Continue to follow the restoration of The Last Hemi on our website at thelasthemi.com. When it comes to restoring or servicing your classic or high-performance car, expertise is the name of the game. And that's precisely what you'll find at RK Motors. You'll find our expertise in the attention to detail that can only be acquired through years of working on world-class builds. You'll also find our expertise in the RKM Performance Center, where we've assembled a team of highly qualified ASC certified mechanics. When expertise is the name of the game, trust the experts at RK Motors. Visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Dandel, I'm not sure if this is a great looking car or a nasty looking car, or a combination of both, because it, it looks pretty intimidating when you put this thing on the road. What, what exactly do you have here? Uh, 47 Chevy, 350 uh, engine, and it, where, uh, I put a 292 cam in the engine. Mustang 2 front end, uh, Trans Am rear end. How long have you had this? Uh, about six years. And you did most of the work yourself Most on of the work it? myself, yeah. Wow, it's really sharp. What did, it, what did it look like when you picked it up? It was a piece of junk. <laughs> <laughs> Could you be more honest, please? Yeah, it was a piece of junk. Was it really? Yeah, it was busted all up. Had holes in it everywhere. Come out of Montgomery, Alabama, my hometown. I was down there visiting my peoples and a friend of mine had it and I bought it. And I got you, pictures of it. And you thought that was a good idea at the time? Oh yeah. Because you knew what you were capable of? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it is certainly nice. Mm -hmm. What'd you do in the interior? Because it's it's beautiful and it looks like it has a sound, a sound system that would blow out everybody's eardrums. Oh yeah. Uh, Mobile Unlimited did the uh, interior. Mickey, a friend of mine. Well, it's, pr it's pretty. Thank what, you. what did you have in mind with the interior? Well, I had in mind different colors, and me and him got together and picked that color out. How about the sound system? Sound system is great. And what 600, was 600 watt amp in sound system? Fills up a 47 Chevy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you went through the process of putting this back together from a piece of junk, what was the toughest part? The toughest part was uh, the front end. I don't put two front ends under it. Mustang two front end. First time we welded under that wrong and I had to cut it out, put another one on it. How long has it been finished? Uh, about six years. Hmm. Uh, I would imagine if you run across those pictures of when it was a beater, a piece of junk, and you look at it now, you probably feel a pretty good sense of pride. All right, I got the pictures in the car. We're gonna look at them, if okay. you don't mind. Don't mind, all right. I feel like I come from something, did something. You did? Oh yeah. <laughs> Some really creative stuff tonight here at the Galaxy Restaurant, huh? I love the drive-in movie theater in the trunk of the Mercury. That's pretty tough to beat. And the Studebaker, the 47 Chevy. Some really, really good work tonight. I'm Jeff Phelps. We'll see you next time on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte.